God trusts you with what you are going through. Am I talking, talking to someone? God trusts you. He knows that deep on the inside of you, he has placed the spirit of resilience that is driven by the Holy Spirit. He knows how powerful you are. Why? Because you know that greater is himself that is in you than the trials that are testing you. When you walk by the Spirit, when you Tonight I want to teach you about uh, walking in the spirit. Amen? Walking what? In the spirit. It's important that we as a church know how to walk in the spirit. And we need to also understand the hindrances or things that can prevent us from walking in the Spirit. In this time and season, it is not the time to listen to your flesh. It is not the time to listen to the world. I'm going to be honest with you. What is affecting the church is the ear of some in the church that is in the world. When your ear is mostly in the world, you make decisions, even subconsciously so, about what you have heard. Not what God is saying. Amen? As I told you last week, that the, everything starts with deception. Everything starts with deception. Everything. The first sin was the sin of what? Covetousness. Ulakaladilo. Utamajitu. To wish to have things. That was the first. And that, it came through what? Deception. And now, we don't want to be in a place where our minds are easily deceived by what the world is saying because our bodies will follow suit. I want to put it to you that if you can tell your body, if you can tell your body that you shall not be deceived by any virus, your body will listen. However, a mind that is filled with what the world is saying, cannot command the body not to be deceived. Are we together? Hallelujah. But a mind that is filled and driven by the word of God will be able to say to the body, mm -mm, you shall not listen. I can, you say body, Body, I know that you can feel the symptoms. I know that you can feel this, but this is not your portion. I'm reminding you, you said, spirit man, remind this body that by his stripes, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you have been healed more than 2,000 years ago. And when that is done, your body follows suit. The same applies to any area of your life. I was speaking to one of the, my friend pastors. He said, Murut, uh, I said to God, I need money because I needed to do something. And there was no any other plan. He said, God, I need money now. The Holy Spirit said, go to one of your jackets in the wardrobe. He went to search one of the jackets. There was a thousand inside. He said, I was not going to call anyone. I want God to provide if he was walking in the flesh, he was going to say, I know my jackets. <laughs> They've been washed already and nothing was found in those jackets. Or they are from the dry clean. Or I know that there is nothing in the wardrobe. But when you walk, 
by the Spirit, you do the impossible. You accomplish the unthinkable. So that is, that is what the body of Christ needs to know. Hallelujah. You, you need to ask yourself this question. Why is the church the one most affected by what is happening currently? Not the malls. Not the casinos. Not the airports. As I said, when I was flying back from East London, the plane was filled with the capacity like, like I was sitting in a taxi. Like closed, there was no social distancing. It is because the malls, the shops, and every other thing, they have managed to sell their concept to the world. So the minds of people have conceived that because we want food is safe. But the church that is supposed to work in the spirit has conceived that because there are people in the church who are not safe which is a lie from the devil. On Sunday after church, I decided to take my family out, to, take, to eat out. The mall was packed. And the way we were eating, it was packed. We decided that we're not going to eat there. We'll buy takeaway and, and, and move on. So I, I saw that this is just the issue of the mindset. Why? Because people are not working in the spirit. The same applies to your finances. The first church in the book of Acts, it was the richest church. That church owns more properties than government. One of the reasons of the persecution of the first church was its financial standing besides the name of Jesus Christ. Why? They walked in the spirit. It has become so blessed that people will say as poor as a church mouse. So Aram saws a kark maze. Why? Because they believe that in the church there's no what? Food. So I, 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 want to tell you, I, want you to, I want you to see the areas where we are affected by not working in the spirit. Just before I start, them, uh, we, have, we have two dogs in the house. I inherited them from my niece. My wife's looking if that is live or not. One of the house came, one of the dogs came partially blind. It was growing some stuff in the eyes. One, one day I was waking, Holy Spirit said to me, go pray for that dog. I said, oh. I said, go pray for it. I went, I went there and prayed for it. Two days later, the eyes are clearing. They said it needed to be operated. And I asked God, why did the dog get healed? I mean, human beings don't receive this type of healing. He said the dog does not have a soul or a belief system. It received what it was given because it trusted you. You are its master. When I was laying hands, something happened. It was standing. And as I began to say the name of Jesus, it bowed down. It laid flat on the time and put the head down, and I continued to pray. I said, this name is powerful so that even the dogs acknowledge it. The dog literally, it was standing, it literally went down, and then I think it was flat on the ground, and it's head down. I continued, to, I continued to pray for it. And when I say amen, I knew that something has happened to that dog. And I asked the Holy Spirit, why? Why, why, why? why? What happened to that dog? And the main reason why the dog got healed is because of his lack of reasoning capacity. 
that human being have. So can you see what role does our minds play in our lives? We reason a lot. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. You are the God who speaks. You are the God who changes not. Speak to us. We are listening. We are depending upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let us go straight for, to the word of God. I'm so excited. I'll tell you what I was doing after this. Galatians 5:22-23. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Let us, start, let us start there. Walking in the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. I want us to look at that 20, verse 23. If we live in the spirit, let us also do what? Walk in the spirit. There is something very interesting about the way this verse starts. But the fruit of the spirit is number one, love. Number two, joy. Number three, peace. Long suffering. One of the hardest things that are happening in human nature is the issue of walking in love. I told you the story that I once shared with you that there was a lady who was dying of cancer and our doctor Theo Volmara said, lady, I want, to, I want you to live, but God is saying until you forgive, he cannot heal you. Holy Spirit is saying, I am the healing power. I want to manifest healing in your life. However, because there is no love, there is hatred and unforgiveness, I cannot work. So, in other words, cancer did not kill her. Hatred killed. And many will blame the disease. So, Holy Spirit work where there is love. Why? The first thing John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So the very essence of salvation is love. That's why I say, the, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? It's love. It's followed by what? Joy. You know, I check my level of joy every morning when I wake up. So, okay. Do I have peace? Okay, what is stealing my peace? Where is my joy? And when I search, I realize that no, it has nothing to do with God. There are issues that are flying around. I might be maybe concerned about the church, concerned about the things that, one of the things that was stealing my joy was the light outside. And I thank God. If, if some of you, when you came in, thank God to, to Mr. Tlangani, 
he nearly fell three times. I was so scared <laughs> when we were busy with the light. And after he did that, my peace was restored. But my peace was not restored by the light. God said, it will be done. Have peace. So I had to start trusting him. So if you don't have joy and peace, it's because you don't trust God enough. Can I repeat that? If you don't have joy and peace, it's because what? You don't trust God enough. Why? We cannot measure when God is going to work based on our times. I told you last week that there are two types of times. There is kairos. Kairos is God's opportune moment. In Galatians, the Bible said, in the fullness of time, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And there is also what? Chronos, from the word chronometer, which is what? Man's appointed time. But God does not work with man's appointed time. He works with the fullness of time. Amen. So, if you want to have joy and peace, remember we're talking about working the Holy Spirit. The first thing, that's the reason why the first thing that Satan wants to steal from a Christian is joy and peace. Those are the two things. He wants to steal that. Why? He knows that out of, outside of that, you are, you are powerless. The Holy Spirit cannot walk with you. It is the first trick of Satan. He knows that even if you are going to pray, you are going to pray fear-based prayers or unforgiveness-based prayers or peaceless-based prayers. Because in such, the Spirit cannot guide. The Holy Spirit cannot guide. If there is something that you need to protect with everything you have, with all that you have, let the joy of the Lord never leave you. Let the peace that surpasses understanding never leave you. Because that's why Jesus Christ called the Prince of what? The Prince of Peace. Do you want to be powerful? Do you want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit? Do you want to walk with the Holy Spirit? Protect your joy and your peace. Amen? Don't allow the enemy to steal them. Do you know what? Our joy and peace are not circumstantial. They are not based on what is happening around us. They are based on who God is. Hallelujah. They are based on the nature and the personality of God. Not circumstances. I told you before, we shared this before, that God, when he was creating the heaven and earth, he said, in the beginning, God. And the Bible says it was, the earth was what? Without form and void. But that did not steal the peace of God. Let me tell you, if it was man who was creating heaven and earth, when you were Genesis, we say in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, the earth was without form and void. Man, the, the Bible according to man was going to start investigating what caused that. Why, why, why was the world without form and void? Why was it dark? How many demons were involved? Who opens the door? For the demons to start working. Why was this happening? You know, there was going to be over 50,000 pages that are talking about why the earth was without form and void. And darkness was hovering upon the face of the waters. <laughs> it was going to be a thousand pages. But check, God overlooked that. He said, I'm God all by myself. I won't be moved by circumstances. They are of low standard. I've got, I've got the world to create. That's, that's you, when a child of God. You're supposed to say, I can see what is happening around me. 
I can see that this is trying to steal my peace. But I want to be moved by circumstances, situations. I've got my destiny to fulfill. I'm going somewhere with my God. I can see that there are some certain things around me that are without form and void. No, I'm not going to discuss why they are without form and void. I'm going to go straight for the word of God. Let there be peace. Let there be joy. Let there be life. Let there be increase. You continue declaring and decreeing the word of God. The reason why most of you are stressing, you are stuck in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1. Why is, it, why is it darkness? Hmm. I think we need to get scientists, engineers. They must come and measure how dark it was. They must come, they must come and measure how dark it was. They must come and measure whether the darkness came from the east or from the west or from the south or from the north. And we must get a prophet who must come and tell us the spirit behind the darkness. <laughs> no to our God. Look at your life. How much time did you spend analyzing the darkness? And you call it stress. Say, neighbor, walk by the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Walk with the Spirit. That's why the Bible says kindness, goodness, faithfulness. But we'll, 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 I'm not going to uh, go to all the fruits of the Spirit. But one of the most important ones is long suffering. Long suffering also equates to persistence in prayer irrespective of the situation whether it's changing or not. I was discussing with someone that the Satan beats Christians with one thing persistence. He's relentless. That's the reason why since the world was even to this day he, he has never changed his strategy. He's still the same way. And, and how does he apply them? Persistence. He will do it again and again and again and again and again until mutwanyam. But if you have the grace of long suffering, you will say, Father, I don't care how long this pain will last. I don't care. I don't care how long this will be. I just don't care. I know that you, you are alive. As Job. When his body was with sores, he was losing left, right, and center. He, left his, he lost his wealth, his children. Ultimately, he lost his health. And the wife came and said, curse your God and die. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. How do you call him your Redeemer? When all things are going haywire, the spirit of long suffering. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And the Bible said the end of Job, God restored him twofold. Everything that he has lost, he had double of everything. So when you walk in the spirit, you don't cry for instant solution. Oh God, I'm tired of this. No. Don't be tired. Pass the test. Do what? Pass it. Pass it. If you... Can I tell you something? This, this world is, is being governed by the standard of Jesus Christ. We've got South African Bureau of Standards. Anything that is not tested by South African Bureau of Standards, 
they say is not worthy to be what to be consumed or to be used. It must be first be tested. And how do they test it? I was looking at the cars, how they test them. They smash them against the wall. They put the dummies inside and see what will happen against in, inside the dummies. Uh, precious sir. <laughs> they smash them. They put accelerated. It, went, it goes against the wall. And they check how, how people will, will be safe inside. If it fails the test, they, go, they are going to improve. They are going to prove upon that car until that car is safe enough to withstand everything that can come against the car. And that will keep you safe. You want God to trust you without being tested? I mean, Jesus Christ, when God came in the flesh himself, he was tested. He went to the wilderness. That's the reason why here I'm going to tell you my secret. I test the leaders that I'm going to work with. I do that. And on purpose. Because I know what we have been going through. I cannot just say, oh no, you will be there. No, no. Sometimes God does it himself. I said, God, I said, no, I'm tasting the heart. I said, okay, let me stand back. It's your church. Long suffering. Don't walk like the world. The reason why the world does not sleep, why I didn't again, about 12 o'clock midnight, even some members of the church, you take a, a big overall, you again, because you <laughs> because you want an instant solution. No. When you walk by the Spirit, you don't give glory to the trials. You don't give glory to the issues. How do you glorify the issues? You know, I wish I can die. You know, I wish, I wish, you know, I wish. No! There was a time that God, I'm worried. Am I still in your right standing? He said, why? I mean, there is no test. Nothing is testing me. Am I in the pocket of Satan? Why is the church going so well? What is happening? Be worried. Because whenever tests come, God is preparing you for the next level. You are prepared to write the test in your classrooms. You know that if you are in grade 8, if you don't pass grade 8, you won't go to grade 9. If you don't write a test for grade 9, you won't go to grade 10. We know that. And you are the ones who are saying, that person did not pass this grade. He felt this and this. But when you come to the spiritual things, we want to walk over. God is not raising children who are not willing to stand the storm. That's the reason why before the children of Israel were released to the wilderness, God looked at them and said, no, this one has still ceases. He said, Pharaoh, increase. Increase their workload. Pharaoh, in his weakness of mind, in his foolishness, he was sure that he's causing so much pain. Little did he know that he's preparing them to cross the Red Sea. Little did he know that he's preparing to cross the Red Sea and his horsemen will drown them. If he, if they, if he did not increase the, way, the workload, there will be ceases. And the Bible says the children of the women of Israel were able to give birth by themselves without the Egyptian midwives. Why? God was preparing them to walk to their promised land. He knew that along the way they will give birth and the Egyptian midwives won't be there. God is preparing you to give birth without the Egyptians' midwives. The spirit of long suffering. It mustn't take your joy. It mustn't take your peace. If you can't take it anymore, say, Father, I need your grace of strength. Strengthen me with might. By your spirit, in my inner man. That, that's what the Holy Spirit is there for. He is your standby power. The time for blaming your past is over. The time for blaming your parents, your aunt, whosoever, it is over. It is time to walk by the spirit. 
and not blame. And said, Holy Spirit, I'm not blaming. Where are you? Hold my hand. I want to walk with you. I want to navigate this path with you. You have been in this world before. It's my first time in this world. You are the first person to be in this world. Before human beings were created, you were hovering upon the face of the waters. You knew this world before earth can be formed. Hold my hand, Holy Spirit. Let me walk with you. Let me walk with you. When you don't know how to pray, Romans 8.26 it, when you do not know how to pray, he teaches us how to pray. Walk by the Spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is the lust of the flesh? Instant gratification. Instant solution. Things that must come now in order to, make, to, to move you away. No. We cannot fail the same class again and again. Some, one day you might just wake up and say, Father, bring it on. I want to pass this class. I want to move to the left, next level of the glory. Holy Spirit, I'm working with you now. What is this test for? Stop looking for pity parties. You know what? You know what? I can't take it anymore. What do you think of this? No. Go to your closet. Heavenly Father, it is painful. Admit. It is painful. It is painful. I cannot stand this pain by myself. However, I don't want to fail this test. I mean, even Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, he knew about what was about to happen. He said, Father, not my will, but your will. Rabbi, come sit down here. Are we together? Long suffering. I love the disciples. They knew what was coming their way. One by one they saw each die in a very cruel manner. But that did not stop the gospel. Today we are seated here because they did not give in. The spirit of long suffering. Where you are going, only the Holy Spirit can navigate the path with you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. Who is the Lord? The Holy Spirit. Because Jesus Christ said, I'm going to be with the Father, but I'm going to leave you with someone like me. He will teach you all things. He will tell you of things to come. He wants to shepherd you. You will find yourself escaping where many are perishing. Why? You just say, no. You are excited. You are walking in the mall. You just say, no, what? Get out. Get out of the mall. Let's go somewhere. The next thing, after five minutes, there is a shootout in the mall. He said, okay, by the way, why did I get out of the mall? You can't remember. But you are out of the mall. You are reading on the news that, oh, but I was here. No, I just passed this shop two minutes ago. He's leading you. You are walking by the Spirit. There was a time I was going to St. Chiron with my family to, to my children's aunt's house. We were delayed. Some funny delays in the house. Holy Spirit said, no. I was about to, you know, men and time. I was about to say, hey, no, no. the Holy Spirit said, be still. I said, okay. I sat down, take my remote, watch my TV, and mommy came. Are we not leaving? I said, oh, we are leaving. I said, are you done? She said, okay, we're done. I said, okay, fine, let's go. 
when we reach N3 just before Glory of Rem, it was just a fresh accident. We missed it by a few minutes, and it was on the, my favorite lane, the first lane. We missed it by a few minutes. It was very fresh. I said to my family, this is what we have missed when we delayed. So, even you, when the Holy Spirit looks like he's delaying your life, he's not delaying you. I was talking to somebody this afternoon. We were talking about marriage. One of the daughters in the church said, no, did they want to get married? I said, no, relax. Who created marriage? She said, it's God. I said, okay, God will give you marriage. I said, I was watching the video of the young man who killed, what's her name? In Senten. Is Lerato, eh? Yeah. He was, when he was moving her out of the flat in a dustbin, the bodies inside there. Did Lerato knew on the first date when she was carrying flowers that the flowers are from her killer? No. That was not revealed. But when you walk by the Spirit, you will see beyond the flowers. You will see beyond the flowers. You will see beyond the gifts. You will see beyond the deception that 10 years down the line, you will kill me. Relax. Hallelujah. Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 30, 21. Whatever you're doing in this season, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right, to the right hand, or wherever you turn to the left. We need to have the spiritual ears to hear the voice behind you. Most of the time, the voice that comes to excite you, the voice that comes to tell you what you need to hear, is not from God. I'm not saying all the time. Most of the time. The voice that comes to tell you, ah, you know what, my dear, just relax, stay at home. No, just log in on Facebook, you'll watch the church. God won't tell you to be away from his presence. So, how do we then develop an ear for the word of God? How do you develop an ear for the, to, to hear the voice of God? It's important to know how. Number one, it's an obvious thing, but it's not so obvious. This word of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it when? Day and night. Eat the word of God. Stick to the word. If anything that's about to happen in your life cannot be confirmed or attested or tested by the word of God, it is not from God. Don't worry, let's just do this. I mean, nobody can see you. Hey, nobody can see you, but God sees all. Nothing is hidden on the sight of God. Learn. Do you want to walk by the Spirit? Learn to test your decision-making process with the Word of God. Is this aligned with the Word of God? If God was here, was my father, will he say, it's okay, go my daughter. It's okay, do it my daughter. It's okay, go my son. It's okay, do it my son. If the Word of God is not in line or if what you are doing is not in line with the word of God, actually, that is not the voice of God. Then question the voice behind you. 3021, Isaiah 3021, question the voice behind you. 
Say, thy ears shall hear the word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left, then you shall, you shall hear what? A word behind thee. You shall hear what? A word. Let me repeat this. You shall hear what? A word. Oh, my daughter, can I prophesy? You will be a millionaire today. Okay. My first question. If God wants to give me a million, what does he want me to do with it in his kingdom? Number one. Number two, am I matured enough to handle the millions right now spiritually? Will the millions put me in the will of God or outside the will of God? Let me, let, let me give you the right word of God concerning your destiny. Little by little, God will increase you until you reach his full measure and the destiny that is designed for your life. And in that fullness of time, you will be the millionaire that God wants you to be. How does he do it? Kingdom-minded. It's like buying a C63 for a 17-year-old. What's that guy? So I know, get this C63. You have just sent the young man to the what? To the grave. Do you think God will do that? He said, if you know how to give good things to your children, you earthly fathers, you sinners, how about me who is God? But when you walk in the spirit, you will be able to test every prophecy, every spirit behind the prophecy. You will say, Father, I don't mind the millions. Grow me first. Why? I want my wealth to be generational. I don't want these millions to stop with me. I want them to be inherited by my children's children up to the hundredth generation. As you grow me, you will grow even the principles of giving in the kingdom of God. You will teach me what to do with the money in the kingdom of God. Because as I grow with those principles, my children will do the same thing. So no person will ever be poor in my generations. Because the wealth of the Lord gives no what brings what? No sorrow. Working by the Spirit. Working in the Spirit. What is the word behind you saying? Hallelujah. And one thing that you have to know, understand the cross. Holy Spirit came to manifest everything that Jesus Christ did on the cross. If you don't understand the cross, you won't understand the language of the Holy Spirit. Are you sick? Yes. Okay, when I can. I four o'clock in the morning. Let's meet in the river four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> By his stripes, you were healed. And what will the Holy Spirit say about your healing? He will, he will tell you, go for the word meditate upon the word until your body follows suit. There was a lady who was reading a book. It's one of Kenneth, Co Kenneth Copeland Ministries. She was very sick. What was cancer? I forgot the type of cancer, but it was terminal. The doctors tried everything. She made a decision to herself. She said, but God said by his stripes I'm healed. She took, she, she took the word. Meditate upon it day and night. It was about 13 scriptures. 
By the time she was done with the scriptures, meditating upon them, the terminal cancer has disappeared. And the doctors were surprised. The Holy Spirit led her daily, without fail, to release the weight upon her life. So look at your situation. Which situation does need a word in your life daily? So that you can persistently and continuously release and speak the word of God upon your life without fail, being led by the Holy Spirit until you see change. Because you know that Jesus died for that situation too. The blood was shed for your career too. The blood was shed for your children too. The blood was shed for your ministry too. The blood was shed for your marriage too. So understand the word and let the Holy Spirit guide you into releasing and uttering the word of God until things change. Talking about uttering the word of God, I was here next to us. There is this caravan. They sell nice fat, 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 fat cooks. Maguinha. So now and then, my appetite sent me there. <laughs> to the caravan. Because I love the lady. She's very clean. And I'm a firm believer of supporting blessed business. Very firm. I believe in that a lot. A lot. I believe in that a lot. So as we're standing there, this lady came. I, I felt like I can say, wake up. The lady, the mama, who's young? Are you? What? 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 I'm a little bit of a man. I'm a little bit of a man. I'm a little bit of a man. And I see that this will happen the whole winter. I said, yo, she has just declared it. And it shall be so. The whole winter, nothing's going to happen to her her business. So she was led to speak death or lack unto her business by the evil spirit. And she doesn't know that Satan is at work. And she said, ah, she continued, I mean, my things are fresh from the produce. I'm fresh, and I'm sure I was born. I was like, you know, my spirit was like, Offended, like not offended, like grieved. Yeah, the word, yeah, the right word, grieved. Like, please stop killing your business. When you walk by the Spirit, you become sensitive to what people say to you. Hallelujah. In closing, because I've, I've just, I'm just on the intro. I didn't, I didn't go to the contest of the matter. <laughs> but I'll close here. Isaiah 40. Say I'm not a victim of circumstances. I'm a child of God passing his test. Mm, must I read it or not? Must I read it or not? No, First Timothy 4 8. We'll, we'll do as there for it. First Timothy 2 8. Because I want to wrap up. First Timothy 2 8. 4 8, I mean. For First Timothy 4 8. 4 8. Why am I saying 2? What am I looking at? For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of which is to come. Why is, why is Paul telling Timothy about bodily exercise profits nothing? Is he saying when you exercise, we're not going to be fit? No. There is a spiritual exercise that is missing in the church. When you wake up in the morning, what do you declare on your day? Or you wake up dragging yourself, yo, it's another day. Give my tata fella. 
Even those matatas that will leave, <laughs> they will be recalled from their leave. And there is someone who just ordered matata. Let them come. She just speaks that. But when you wake up in the morning, what is your exercise? Father, I thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made. Your first ways matters. Your first ways in the morning will direct the course of the rest of your day. Don't start by complaining. Don't start by feeling pity for yourself. Don't start by saying anything negative towards yourself. Your first ways matters. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice in them. Father, I thank you that you are leading me this morning. Holy Spirit, I'm dependent upon you. You know the setup of this day. I'm dependent upon you. As I walk out, let your favor go before me. And let your glory be my rear guard. That's your first exercise. It's not bodily exercise. It's a spiritual exercise. Holy Spirit, you know all the corners of my office as I go to work. Teach me what to say. What not to say. What to do. What not to do. Where to go and where not to go. Holy Spirit, I surrender the day unto you. You have prayed the most powerful prayer than somebody who has prayed the whole night complaining to God. Now you are claiming the promises of your life, which is now is and which is to come by exercising your spiritual man. May you stand up. I love the looks. Why is it important to be led by the Spirit? What is the importance of that? Can you read Romans 8.14? It confirms something. Romans 8.14, what does it say? I want you to see the importance of being led by the Spirit. And ask yourself, if you are not led by the Spirit, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? One of the confirmation of the sonship of your relationship with God is you allowing His Spirit to lead you. Check your mind. Why am I meditating about, about this? I was looking, I was talking to one pastor. He said, oh, there is a group of people who have left his church. And they formed a group how to destroy their previous church. I mean, is that, are those the sons of God? God is saying, I've built my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And you decide to be the gates of Hades. <laughs> God will show you. He won't be dealing with you. Now he's dealing with what? The gates of Hades. Check what comes to your mind. Never ever in your life fight against the will of God. What is the will of God? The written word of God concerning your life, concerning your family, concerning your ministry, concerning your church, concerning everything. Never ever fight. Walk by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. You will see the fullness of God in your life. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Talk to him. Talk to him. 
talk to him. The Bible says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry, Abba, Father. 16. The spirit in bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If children, then heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, we shall also be glorified together. Holy Spirit want to guide you. Be careful of the spirit of offense. Be careful of the spirit of anger. Be careful of any spirit that seeks to divert you away from where God wants you to be. Be led by the spirit. Be led by the spirit. Walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. The flesh is always lasting against the will of God. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you.